Hey guys, welcome to the MagFed Ranch Paintball channel and today I'm going to be doing a not MagFed worthy video. But before I get into it guys, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, share and comment. Okay guys, this one's going to be a fun video. It could be a little bit controversial so I'm super excited to see what your guys' comment is. But the topic of today's not MagFed worthy video is backup pistol markers are not MagFed worthy. Okay, so I'm going to be making a case on why using a backup pistol as part of your loadout is not MagFord worthy. Just in essence, just not useful, not really the right way to go, to go about it. Okay, and so let's, uh, I'm going to start off uh, from uh, the least to most uh, important reason on why having a backup pistol is not MagFed worthy, guys. But before I get into it, guys, uh, this has nothing to do with uh, strictly the TIPX pistol. This could be, you know, obviously a Roscoe or, of course, the First Strike FSC. Okay, so just any backup pistol, just the concept of using a backup pistol uh, as part of your loadout and why it's not MagFed worthy. Okay, so first thing. Uh, in my mind, guys, is going to be performance, okay? And and why why I say that is because let's talk about it in the context that, you know, that I always uh, promote here, which is first strike use, okay, guys? And so when you're using first strikes in a T TIPX pistol, uh, of course, FSC, right? Uh, one of the things you have to see, have to consider is, is that pistol... Uh, even first strike capable, right? So obviously the FSC is, but with the TIPX, you're gonna have to get some type of conversion, right? The long range kit uh, or some type of breach. Uh, and you guys know, you know, like guys go check out that video where I, I made a video about the Sconey uh, FSR breach and why it's not mag fed worthy, but the pistol might not even be compatible with first strike uh, to begin with. And then, of course, if you're just using standard round ball, uh, the performance of just round ball out of a TIPX pistol with a six inch barrel is mostly going to be for close range shots, right? Uh, you're not, yes, can you take guy, you know, take uh, players out? But on average, once again, we're talking about effectiveness. You know, one of your primary uh, rifle markers is going to do a much better job of taking out your opponent, especially if you're going to be using first strike rounds, okay? The, the, so the range is going to be a huge point, right? So, and then if you're going to be using first strike rounds, right, if you convert your TIPX to use first strike rounds, out of a six inch barrel, it's not going to be as accurate as a standard, you know, even like a 10 inch MR18, or of course, you know, going all the way out to our 18 inch or 20 inch uh, sniper markers, but just even kind of just your standard 12, 14 inch barrel marker, you know, out of a six inch barrel, you're not gonna get that long range uh, accuracy and precision uh, as you would get uh, with, the, with the rifle markers. And so, you know, you're spending a lot of money, you know, 40 cents a round, uh, for just kind of a case of your standard FSR for not really getting the full benefit out of the platform, right? I mean, even with the rifle barrel like I have here with the hammerhead rifle barrel in here, guys, um, the accuracy is still not gonna be as good as the longer barrels. And then also just let's talk about just how you're gonna have to sight and, and fire the marker, right? The built-in iron sights on the marker is literally just a built-in cutout and a front uh, built-in blade here, guys. You know, when you're going to aim the marker, it's just like shooting pistols with rifles in real life. Uh, you're gonna be a lot more accurate with a rifle compared to a pistol. Now at close ranges, once again, that might not be a huge issue, but when you're talk, talking about the, the, the majority of distances that we're you know, engaging our targets at in a, in a paintball game, especially with first strike once again, you know, the advantage of having a, mar a rifle over a pistol is, is significant. And then, like I said, just the stable platform, right? Uh, you, you know, you being able to hold a pistol. Guys, this isn't, like I said, this isn't controversial. Maybe some of you guys out there thinking uh, think that you can shoot a pistol better than a rifle, but 
in average, in general, a person can shoot a rifle much more accurately and have a much stable plat more uh, stable platform versus a pistol. And so you're not going to be as accurate, okay, uh, with the pistol. Another thing that's going to affect the performance too is, of course, is just uh, the fact that these pistols take uh, your standard CO2 cartridges, unless of course, right, you, unless you, of course, you convert them to use the air through adapter and then some type of ta uh, remote tank with a remote line. But then now you're adding to a cost, you're adding weight, you're adding more bulkiness to your loadout, um, right? If you add the, add all that features. And then of course though, if you're just using just your standard 12 gram cartridge CO2, it's inconsistent. Right, CO2 just inherently by nature is inconsistent. It's hard on O-rings. It's it's gonna wear the the, the components of the TIPX, like the, mainly the O-rings, right? More than using compressed air. And then the shot to shot consistency with the FPS is not gonna be consistent. So once again, your accuracy with the first strike rounds or even just normal paintball is gonna be affected by the inconsistency of the standard CO2 system, okay? Uh, which leads me to the next part of the performance, which is um, if you want extended range, we talked about the iron sights, right? Because the TIPX, it doesn't really have any provisions for you know an optic or anything like that, unless you get some type of, maybe you get the breech cover kit with the Picatinny rails here, or like you get like this MCS, um, I believe it's the TM, TMP8 body kit. But anyways, some type of conversion kit to turn this into a carving, guys. Uh, you're not going to be able to use optics, which will, of course, effectively uh, uh, increase your hit probability, right? Increase your accuracy. But then once again, that's adding to the weight, the bulkiness, and the cost uh, of your overall marker. Okay, so that's, that's performance, guys. Uh, let's transition to the next topic, which is going to be just bulkiness uh, and weight, right? Because we talked about like, you know, you're adding a marker now uh, that is, it's obviously, is, it's weighing down, right? You have to carry an extra two magazines for it as well too. Uh, so it's going to add weight to your loadout. And of course, take up space potentially on your vest, right? Your chest rig, like you see I have here. Um, instead of potentially carrying maybe one or two magazines here, now you're taking up space to put a, a backup mark, uh, marker holster, right? A backup pistol marker holster. And even, let's say you run a, uh, a thigh rig, right? A thigh uh, leg rig, that's adding more bulk and weight to your overall loadout now. And guys, I mean, I've yet to try a thigh rig. I know there are some nice ones out there for the TIPX and some other of the pistols, but I've yet to try one that has been like super secure, like the ones that our, our, our military uses, right? I, I, I've always had inherently like floppiness. And so it's just kind of like kicking around and just, you know, just flinging around on your leg when you run or when you dive. And so I think, I believe our military uses like, you know, the Safari Land uh, uh, thigh, thigh, uh, thigh setups, right? Thigh rig uh, setups with the M9s and of course the 1911s, but you know, um, with our, our, our pistols, our paintball pistols, we have yet to really have a good uh, thigh rig that's gonna make it secure and not flop around, at least in the time that I'm playing. But hey guys, if you guys out there know of a really good rig, uh, uh, comment in the comment section, and let, let everyone out there know uh, which one's a good rig to use so that way you're not getting that, that floppiness, okay? So yeah, so going back to it, instead of, you know, obviously having a loadout where you can have extra magazines, which will increase your marker, uh, your rifle capability, now you're having to take up space for a pistol, which going back to our first reason, guys, is not going to be the better performance, uh, better performing marker overall, okay? And then, of course, if we carry it, you know, let's say like a carbine, like I know one of my teammates did, he carried this on a sling strapped to his body uh, on top of his, you know, his normal primary. Once again, it's just adding more weight and it's just adding more bulkiness to the setup, right? Um, 
I forgot to mention one thing too about the performance too. We're limiting ourselves on capacity as well too, right? Because the most of the pistols, they're either only gonna have six or seven round magazines. I get it guys, there's the Zeta mags out there, there's the 12 round, you know, Tipman magazines. But once again, that's gonna add bulkiness to the marker. And it's still not as much firepower as a 19 round T15 or 19 round uh, Valken M17 mag. Uh, in your standard uh, primary right uh, marker, okay? So you're kind of sacrificing some performance there as well. Um, in terms of uh, the bulkiness and the weight saving, you know, a lot of people will say, well, hey, it's it's not that added much weight, but once again, this leads me to the, uh, the, the next uh, talking point, which is, Yes, you can, you can make an argument where it's not adding that much more weight or that taking up that much more space, but are we going to use it, right? Is it going to be useful for the potential emergency situations that you might use it? Is it really worth all the negative aspects about it, right? So, for example, you know, I told you guys about my, my history with my team where like, you know, in the years of gameplay that we played, you know, we played for a good four or five years, you know, countless, you know, countless games I can think of the top of my head, you know, walk-ons, uh, uh, full scenario gameplays, full mag-fed only gameplays. I, I can only remember having to draw my pistol one time um, because it was needed. Um, now, where the other times I drew my pistol just because I wanted to have fun to, to, to play with it, Yes, but I can only really remember one time that I actually had to, you know, uh, pull the pistol out as an actual backup emergency type situation. And I, I remember my teammates, a lot of them didn't even carry backup pistols because of that, right? I, I know, like, I think three or four, like, so more than half of our teammates didn't carry pistols. Uh, and so only like maybe three or four two or three of us carried back of pistols. My, one of, you know, me included, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, the, just the usage, you know, the frequency of use uh, for those worst case scenarios versus, you know, its effectiveness, its performance, and the fact that it's taking up all this weight, is it really worth it? And guys, it's, it's kind of funny that I say that because it kind of translates to real life, right? Uh, once again, like I said, I, you know, I don't want to keep, uh, uh, promoting this, but this, this gentleman's channel is, is really, really, really cool, really realistic. It gives a lot of real world uh, feedback. And that's obviously Jeff Gerwich over at Modern Tactical Shooting. And guys, go check out his video where he talks about the M1911 uh, uh, in Special Forces, right? And specifically, obviously, he was an Army Ranger. And uh, in his countless years of, of, uh, of, of you know, obviously uh, being in special forces and obviously, you know, uh, actually going to combat, I think he had like 26 plus years of doing that. Uh, in that video, he says that he can only uh, remember five times or less than five times, you know, like in essence, just a handful of times that he actually heard a story or someone said that they actually had to draw their pistol in combat. Okay, so that kind of shows you right there out of all our special forces guys, you know, during that period of, of fighting, uh, the infrequent use of the backup pistol, okay? And then uh, an, another uh, gentleman um, had an uh, interview with, uh, uh, on the Sean Ryan show, that's another great channel guys, go check that one out, uh, where he interviews uh, these former, you know, soldiers, former uh uh, special forces guys, you know, from Delta all the way to Devru, right? SEAL Team 6. And I think it was the interview that he had with DJ Shipley, a former uh, uh, SEAL Team 6 guy, Devru guy. And he was talking about how they don't even carry pistols anymore uh, when they go on missions because he said that, you know, it's pretty much uh, ineffective that by the time that you would transition to a pistol, Either your teammate, you know, that's that's obviously, you know, uh, running and gunning with you, right? You know, uh, in the CQB situation, they're they're going to take out the enemy for you already, because that's how obviously fast and how obviously you know uh, organized they are. 
And then plus, you know, it's just the effectiveness of it, right? It's the rifle is just going to to be way more accurate and way more effective at putting down their target uh, versus a pistol. Now, obviously, guys, you know, in paintball, we we don't have that that issue right because a hit's a hit i mean shoot you can hit somebody in the pinky finger right and technically they need to call themselves out so um there's not a lethality aspect to our paintball gameplay right but the fact of the matter is that you can still aim better with the rifle marker right it has a longer sight distance and then of course if you have some type of optic on it it's going to be a lot faster more accurate and then once again just the use right the frequency of use you know, if you're not going to really use your backup marker that much, then is it really worth to carry all this extra weight? It's taking up space. It adds an additional cost. And the performance ain't that great, right? I mean, first strike, you know, on a shot of a short barrel with a uh, short sight picture with not so much stability with using CO2 as well. The, the accuracy is not going to be there. And then, of course, if you're just going to use round ball, then you're going to even have less accuracy than the first strike rounds. Okay, guys? But, hey, what do you guys think? Do you guys play with uh, backup marker, uh, pistol markers out there? And do you guys think it's a mandatory that you should have one on your loadout? Uh, and, yeah, which ones would you guys carry if you do it? But, hey, guys, if you guys like that video, subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button. Check you guys next time. Peace.